I look at the numbers, I, I, I'm struck by the fact that there seems to be maybe a number of issues with the, the what decisions Fine Gael made. And one of them could be running two candidates, and the other, just in terms of the numbers that you got in first preferences, was maybe not using you as a candidate again. Uh, yeah, well, just if I could say by way of background to this, that Sarah, uh, Sandra rather, and Sandra McIntyre and uh, KP, Councillor KP O'Reilly ran excellent campaigns, and uh, they, dis uh, they, you know, they done everything they could possibly do. They acted with great dignity and there are people who are very highly regarded and they remain highly regarded after it and they <laughs> deported themselves excellently throughout the campaign and I'm very proud of them and that there's nothing they could have done they didn't do. It would be the case, I suppose, that maybe when you're in a, in a, in a defending situation that you would be better consolidating with one candidate. Um, I don't, I mean, what you say is very gratifying to me on a personal level, but I don't think it's a particular, and I appreciate the question, and it's an understandable question, but I don't feel that comfortable going down that road now, because what I want to do is more applaud the two candidates for the sure. effort they made. But, you know, I did have a very good vote the last time. It was about 424 out in, uh, in a four-seater, and we had West Cavan in this time, and we had North Mead. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, but just but, but, that my I question mean, people can draw their own conclusions. Sure, sure. It's a difficult but we have two fine people but, who ran, that's one thing. But uh, uh, removing yourself from the sure. situation yes. and, and and accepting the fact that the two candidates were good, mm. but just looking at the numbers, was there a strategic error? Well, I let others judge that. Okay. <laughs> but, we'll move on. Uh, no, but I uh, appreciate yeah, I uh, know it wasn't yeah, well look at it. It's I suppose uh, the only thing you can say is that hindsight is foresight for a copyright, as I say. But, <laughs> uh, uh, but at the same, so in that respect, it was a. Uh, you look back on it in that way. But yes, I mean the figures. I had very gratifying figures. Um, but I, I, I did argue this toss with my party for two months, and I eventually bowed to what seemed superior wisdom. Now but, uh, you know. It's, uh, one of the things seems to be a lot of people are talking about is the young people who went out and voted. And the young people, by young people I'm talking about people from their late teens up until their 30s. And all they've known in terms of their, their conscious life has been Fuena Goyal and government. Sure. Do you think that that was one of oh, the Oh, I do. Options? I think there's no question about it when you identify the reasons that we're not, you know, we didn't have the kind of election we anticipated. And I suppose that thing about extra candidates came out of a level of hubris, if you like, or a level of belief that we could win seats. Uh, we, just, we thought, you know, we could win seats everywhere with the opposite problem to Sinn Féin on this occasion. But that's all the case. But uh, yes, the fact that we're nine years in power, uh, there's an inevitable sort of tiredness or thing that are, uh, with the public get a bit tired of an administration. Maybe for no rational reason, because we had a huge plethora of achievements that I don't think you want me to start listing now but you know that were enunciated in the campaign around the economy, around Brexit, around employment etc and uh, but yet the fact that we yeah we were it was a bit people wanted to change the wallpaper there's no question about that. But that, that changing of the wallpaper traditionally for uh, like the last 50 years that I can remember the changing of the wallpaper was either Fine Gael or Fianna Fáil Yet we're looking at a situation whereby mm. people have gone for something that's completely different and yeah. a party that right up to this were a fringe party, a small party. Why do you think Sinn Féin have got to the point where yeah, well, candidates I think, weren't even elected in the last local elections mm. are now sitting TDs? I think there's a couple of things here. I think in retrospect, both parties would have to accept that the... the over-targeting of Sinn Féin and the possible leaving them out of debates initially uh, worked to Sinn Féin's advantage. I also think Sinn Féin made the running on housing and I think they had they have a particularly able person in housing who made the running there with great effect and I think Sinn Féin was seen to represent change and I suppose the Greens in rural Ireland weren't going to capture the imagination and I do 
accepted maybe some of the events like the the events around the RIC commemoration all that would have would have been given a level of oxygen to Sinn Féin as they went into the campaign. So it's multifaceted. I mean, it's you could say it's our length of thing. You could say it's the housing initiative. The, the fact that Sinn Féin made the running on housing. It's Sinn Féin has seemed to speak to the alienation or frustration of people in, their, in certain places. And there was a degree too to which people hadn't fully forgiven Fianna Fáil and they weren't rehabilitating Fianna Fáil. And that, that's very clear that those votes that would, you would have assumed would go to Fianna Fáil in the past have gone to Sinn Féin now. So, I mean, that's all part of it. Finally, and, and briefly, Joe, um, do you think a period in opposition is good for the party? I don't see that we need to be in opposition. I, I mean, I don't see that we need to be in opposition. I mean, I mean, it's uh, there are a number of permutations there, and a number of them still include Fine Gael. Um, I, I, I don't see, I think it, it's an absolute that we'll be in opposition. I mean, it's also a theoretical possibility that you'd have some other combination around led by Fianna Fáil, but there's no, it would appear to me, and I haven't got time because I was doing something totally different today earlier to go through, but I got out the UCD research, the politics department of UCD have said that Fianna Fáil could have something like 40 to 45 seats, we could have something like 35 to 40 seats, and Sinn Féin could have something like around the early 30s or whatever. I'm not sure of the figure there. So, what I'm saying is that there's not a permit, there's not an automatic permutation that would seem to work, and I don't know will there be an appetite to go back to the country for another election. I don't think that's going to want to be the case either. So Finn Gael could be part of the next government, and uh, the Lord knows what will happen in the next uh, few weeks because there are so many uh, things that could happen. And I mean, I, I don't propose to bore you now, but we could have a learned discourse on each possible permutation and how it might pan out. I mean, I did, was on our local radio station there and uh, Mr. Finnegan Joe, who would have been a former colleague of your editor, uh, your very distinguished madam editor, uh, that Joe Finnegan did put it to me, that uh, what about the prospect of a Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael Grand Coalition? And yes, on paper, but that, that creates left-right politics in Ireland. And it, 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 it doesn't necessarily... And it might even put Sinn Féin in an even stronger position, position for you. Oh, it would, ultimately. So that has to be looked at. So it's a fascinating vista. I actually did send, I mean, I actually sent a text to our party leader today, making some suggestions to him in this area. I mean, I don't, he'll, he'll distill... Did he text back? No, he did, but he, he'll distill all of these. But um, I, I, I have some private concepts around it, but I think it... Um, I think anything's possible. I mean, I hope to remain in, in, in the Shannon myself, but I won't be. I'm quite sure, and I said this in all humility, I would have been self-effacing. I won't be part of our negotiating team. Uh, but I suppose we'll have a level of feet into it in our parliamentary party, you know, and anything that's decided by the negotiating teams will have to come back to, to the, will have to come back to the party. Uh, to the party in the form of an Ardesh or a special conference or, and the parliamentary party. So I, I think we're in unknown territory, very much unknown territory. And I think uh, I think there's edge of a paddy power to open a book. <laughs> you know, so That's I, great. Thanks very thank much. You.